Thank you for your giving. I shared Wednesday night, and I think I'll go ahead and share this morning too, that of course many of you have been giving towards the youth summer missionary trip that is planned in two weeks, and the young people have just done so well in going to various churches and singing and ministering, and God has been using that as a means to help them raise funds, and you also gave a wonderful offering here for them specifically two Sundays ago, uh, $3,300 came in for them, uh, but just to kind of put it in perspective, we filled the bus, that is the bus that we are going to be able to use, not our old school bus, but the one, the Union Bible College bus that they're going to use to go on their trip out to Colorado, it holds about 400 gallons, and um, you know, a big part of the expense of the trip I'm sure you understand is fuel expense. Anybody seen the pump prices lately? Well, uh, I just wanted to tell you that we filled the bus and it only cost $1,528. So it's ready for the trip. But see, thank you for your giving. Um, we wanted to go ahead and fill it because we were afraid it might go up again before the end of June. So uh, that's why we went ahead and got it filled up. And uh, we don't think the 400 gallons will get them all the way there and back, but we think it might get them two-thirds of the way back, and then we're going to just send them an SOS and say, have fun. But uh, no, not really. They're going to make it home. But anyway, uh, just wanted you to be aware. Uh, your giving is important and very helpful, and I believe God is definitely going to use that group of young people out there uh, to help as they're going to be involved in uh, actually changing animal stables into dwelling places for people to live in. Can you believe that? That's one of the things they'll be working on that week, donating their time and help. So thank you for giving for the young people, and, and God will certainly bless and honor that. Well, we want to move ahead in the service this morning. I encourage you to get ready to join in the singing as Brother Luke Brinkman comes to lead us in the singing, let's get ready to sing from our hearts and make a joyful noise into the Lord. We're going to start with song number 412. 412, as you turn there, I'm going to read uh, some scripture. It comes out of Psalms 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. That's out of Psalm 40, song number 412, He Brought Me Out. Let's sing that this morning. My heart was distressed neath Jehovah's dread frown, and lo, my sins dragged me down. I cried to the Lord from the deep miry clay, who tenderly brought me out to golden day. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the solid rock to stay. He puts a song in my happy soul to a song of praise, hallelujah. He placed me upon the strong rock by his side. My steps were established and here I'll abide. No danger of falling while here I remain, but stand by his grace. Miry clay, he set my feet on the solid rock to stay. He puts a song in my happy soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. He gave me a song, twas a new song of praise. By day and by night, 
its sweet notes I will raise. My heart's overflowing, I'm happy and free. I'll praise my Redeemer who has rescued me. He brought me out of the deep miry clay, and He set my feet on the solid rock to stay. He puts a song in my happy soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. I'll sing of his wonderful mercy to me. I'll praise him till all men his goodness shall see. I'll sing of salvation at home and abroad Till many shall hear the truth and trust in God He brought me out of the deep miry clay He set my feet on the solid rock to stay He puts a song in my happy soul to turn back a few pages, song number 420, 420, I'm going to ask you to stand as we sing, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have life in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea. my wandering and going astray since Jesus came into my heart and my sins which were many are all washed away since Jesus came into Like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure Since Jesus came into my heart And no dark clouds of doubt Now my pathway obscure Since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into There's a light in the valley of death now for me Since Jesus came into my heart And the gates of the city beyond I can see Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart, joy o'er my 
shall go there to dwell in that city I know since Jesus came into my heart and I'm happy so happy as onward I go since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart morning and we might need to catch our breath after that one but I hope that uh, you have joy in your heart since Jesus did come in let's turn back to song number 516 I believe it is and it's a little bit of change of tempo but it goes along the same same theme cleanse me O God, search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked way in me, and cleanse me from every sin, and set me free. Song number 516. I burn with 
That was such beautiful and meaningful singing. Thank you, Brother Luke, for leading us in those songs. And certainly that uh, prepares our hearts for a time of prayer. And as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, we do want to pray for our youth camp. We want to pray for our young people, pray for Jesse and Adi and all of the other ones that will be a part of uh, conducting the youth camp this week and working with the young people. Pray for safety, pray for protection, that nobody will get seriously injured and uh, nobody will get sick and they'll just have a good time. It looks like they're going to have at least plenty of warmth. I don't think we'll have to move in any electric heaters, but uh, let's pray that they'll have a good week. Most importantly, a time of uh, being immersed in the presence of God. So let's pray for our youth camp. We do have some physical needs we want to continue to keep before you. And uh, Bill Ames did come through his surgery, uh, from what I understand well, this week on Thursday. Uh, they did not have to do the skin grafting. Is that correct? Did I understand that correctly? Uh, they did do some bone grafting and put some more hardware in there on that leg. And let's just pray that God will help that leg to completely heal this time. He's had a lot of problems over the last few months after that break. So let's pray for Bill Ames. He surprised us and showed up with his apparatus last Sunday, and he'd have been here today if he could have got out of the hospital. But uh, let's pray for Bill Ames. Continue to pray for David Hayes, Danny and Ruth Ann's son-in-law. He continues to need our prayers physically in his process of recovery. It's been a very slow road uh, following cancer surgery and a lot of other details there. Let's pray for Bob Journey. I did speak with him on the phone yesterday and he is continuing to progress. He was thinking they might have been able to be here today, but uh, he said still having some little issues and, and he had a pretty serious surgery just uh, two to three weeks ago, removing a portion of one lung uh, that was cancerous and so let's pray for him. He said tell the people thank you for their prayers and hopefully we can be back next Sunday but uh, let's just keep lifting them in prayer and uh, also um, Brother Ron Thompson is facing a heart procedure uh, surgery this coming Wednesday and uh, as Brother Ron would express he's in the hands of the Lord and he's trusting the Lord and we are too. But we want to do our part to pray for him and pray for the surgeons that will be working with him this coming Wednesday. And so let's do our part to lift him in prayer. Uh, we are also praying for Mark Pegg's mom, Kate. Uh, she has had a very difficult time. She has been recently moved to the Randolph Nursing Home. And let's just continue to pray for her and pray for the family as this is a very difficult time for them. I uh, also encourage you to uh, just continue to pray for one another as we look to the Lord for this time of prayer today. I'm sure that some of you may have uh, unspoken requests. You just like to lift your hands. God sees all of those hands across the audience. If you're physically able to stand, I would invite you to do so as we talk to the Lord and as I say every Sunday. You feel free to join right in and talk to the Lord from your heart as I lead in prayer. He can certainly hear all of us at the same time, and He knows the cry of our hearts. Let's talk to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today extremely grateful for all of your blessings to us. We have seen you at work. We have seen you at work this week, and we thank you for that. We uh, continue to pray on behalf of our young people as they'll be having their youth camp this week. We pray that your presence would rest upon them, be with the evangelist, uh, Brother Steve Gardner, so he'll be speaking to them, be with every person that has a part in providing music nightly there. We pray that you will be with them. We pray for Jesse and Adi and all of those that are a part of the leadership there at the youth camp and we ask that you would give them protection. We ask that you would 
give them strength, uh, give them the right amount of energy. We know the young people tend to have plenty, but uh, we pray for energy for uh, the older ones that will be there as well. Give them strength and help. And then, Lord, we do pray for those with uh, physical needs among us. We pray for Brother Bill Ames that you would continue to help him. Thank you for being with him through this most recent surgery this past Thursday. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to surround him with your presence and your help. Be with uh, uh, David Hayes. You know all that he has faced and experienced. We know, Lord, that you are not taken by surprise. You are not unaware. You are very aware. And yet we also recognize the value that is there in prayer. Your word has admonished us to, to bring our burdens to you. You've told us to come boldly before the throne of grace. And, Lord, you did not say that just for us to go through some sort of a ritual or a ceremony but rather that we would uh, recognize there is real meaning in coming to you in prayer. It is not mere ritual, but it is, it is the opportunity to literally commune with you, the creator of the universe. And Lord, you are able to uh, be with David Hayes in his situation. We thank you for the help that you are giving to Bob Journey and ask that you would just continue to help him. May there be complete recovery. Thank you for the progress that he testifies to and that you are helping him to experience, but we know it's still quite a road for him to travel in full recovery, and we just ask that you would be with him and help him. And then, Lord, we do pray for Brother Ron. We know that you are very aware. You know all of what is going on, and uh, you are the one that has put us together. You have given knowledge. You have given talent to individuals that are able to uh, step in and to do things that help our bodies to do better. And we thank you for that. We thank you for that talent. We thank you for medical science. And above all, we recognize you are the one that uh, is truly the healer. And I just pray that your hand will be upon Brother Ron and be with the surgeon, be with everybody that's on that medical team that will be working with him Wednesday and cause that that procedure will go well. And we know that he will and we will give you praise and honor. We pray also on behalf of Mark's mom, Kate. Pray, Lord, that you would be with her. We know that uh, you have a plan for every one of us. And may she just sense you especially near at this time. Be with uh, the entire family, give them wisdom, give them strength, and uh, even to those that are working with her there at the uh, Randolph Nursing Home, we just pray that you would give them wisdom and help. Lord, we are looking to you for your guidance in the ongoing of this service today. You saw every hand that was lifted for prayer, and every one of those hands are significant to you. They have meaning behind that which caused them to raise their hand. And Lord, we know that you are interested in all of these needs. And we just bring them all to you collectively, knowing that you're well able to administer the help that is needed. Above all, Lord, we praise you for the privilege of coming into your presence. We praise you for the freedom that we continue to have in the United States of America to be able to worship you freely and to come together in this setting as we are today, we praise you for all of that. We thank you for the temporal blessings and just ask that above all your presence will continue to rest upon every aspect of this service today that you may receive honor and glory in your precious name, the name of Jesus we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It is uh, a real joy to have uh, Brian and Brianna visiting with us again, and uh, today Brianna, along with two of her siblings, Luke and Jelena, are going to come and favor us in a special number and song at this time.
It is a joy to be with you all here. Um, nice to be back in my home church. Traveled from Michigan uh, last evening and um, so thankful to be with you all. I feel impressed that God wants me to share my heart, share my, my testimony, really. Um, a lot of you know me growing up. And um, back in 2004, um, I faced a circumstantial storm by losing my father, my late father. Um, a storm that lasted 17 years. Storm, I started to spiral downward with anxiety, with the depression, fear. Um, that lasted um, a total of about 17 years. And I feel like God finally, I, after hitting rock bottom, he lifted me out of miry clay like he's, we sang this morning. He brought me out of that deep, dark pit. And a lot of you know what that's like. And I just want to encourage you that there is always hope. I have had my aunt and uncle, Uncle Jane, Uncle Aunt Ree, my mother. I've had those people in my life to pray for me in those darkest times. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful that he saw my need. And it took time. It takes time sometimes when you're in that deep, dark pit. There is always hope with Jesus. And I'm so thankful that he brought me out. I, I have come and he set me on a rock to establish me and to glorify him. My, I now have meaning in life. I have meaning because I, my complete goal in life is to glorify him. And what an amazing, amazing reason to live, to glorify God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And I hope that is your cry as well. This song is about his strength. When I was not, I had no more strength no more strength. I was broken. I was as broken as you can imagine. I had no more strength. But when I let him be my strength, his strength is perfect when ours is gone. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But, but sometimes, sometimes I wonder what he can do through me. No great success to show, no glory on my own. Yet in my weakness he is there to let me know His strength is perfect when our strength is gone He'll carry us when we can't care Our weakness goes. His strength in us begins where ours comes to an end. He hears our humble cry and proves again his strength. Perfect 
when our strength is gone. He'll carry us when we can't carry on. Raised in His power, the weak become strong. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. Raised in His power, the weak become strong. His strength is perfect. His strength that say a hearty amen. amen praise the lord thank you brianna luke and jelena for that beautiful and meaningful song praise god well at this time we are going to dismiss the children ages 12 and under to go to their time of bible study and encourage the rest of you to get your bibles or your electronic devices whichever is most easily accessible. I want to say when we dismiss the children like this, it's not because they are supposed to go back there and have fun and games. Uh, they're just uh, going to a time of worship geared to their level. And uh, we appreciate them being in here most of the time. But we have just made this uh, procedure a part of what we have done for quite some time to give uh, parents maybe a little opportunity to focus more while others are back there with the children. But um, just uh, thankful that we can all be together as one big family. The scripture that I am directing your attention to, one verse of scripture today, at least for the foundation of our thoughts, found in Deuteronomy. As Brother Charlie was teaching in Sunday school today, that's part of the Pentateuch part of the first five books of the Bible, part of the writings of Moses, the fifth of his writings, at least as it is recorded, Deuteronomy, and we are looking to verse 33, and one verse, and in fact, one part of one verse, and that is verse 27, chapter 33, verse 27. If you're physically able to join me in standing, I would invite you to do so. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. And these are the words that I want to focus on that I have felt the Lord laying on our heart for this service today. These words, the eternal God is thy refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. That's a pretty exciting verse of Scripture when you think about the meaning of it. And I hope with the help of the Lord we can get that out to some degree to you today in the way that the Lord has made it known unto me. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the reality of your word. And may we... Have your help in applying this to our hearts and our lives today. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As you think about that phrase of Scripture that we read today, the eternal God, not just any God, not just some God, not just some deity or higher power, but the eternal eternal God. That means a God that had no beginning and has no ending. I know that is beyond our complete comprehension, 
but we accept it by faith because God's Word teaches it and we believe God's Word. And so we are talking today about a God that is eternal, had no beginning, will have no ending. And that uh, verse of Scripture tells us that He, that eternal God, is going to be your refuge. And furthermore, underneath, underneath you are His everlasting arms. I so appreciated the song that was just sung by the trio and the scriptural meaning of that which they sung. It's so clearly taught. Certainly we can see it in this verse, but you can see it even more specifically over in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 where the Apostle Paul was praying for actually for deliverance from what he referred to as a thorn in the flesh. We don't know altogether what that was, but it was sure something he didn't enjoy. Uh, you ever have any problem in your life you didn't enjoy? Yeah, we all do. But even as he prayed for deliverance from that, God spoke to him and uh, he made it very clear he was not going to remove the thorn, but he said, I'm going to give you extra grace. He said, because my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now that's something that we don't humanly maybe altogether uh, understand, and yet God wants us to learn that there is tremendous value in leaning upon His everlasting arms, that which will never let us down. Have you ever gotten tired holding something? I didn't try to plan to do this today, but I have seen it done. But uh, asking someone just to hold a glass of water out like this. Now, none of us would consider that a glass of water is something that is very heavy. We wouldn't consider that heavy, would we? Uh, but you hold a glass of water out like this for even 15 minutes. And your arm will get tired. Friday evening we were at the campground. And by the way, I'm very grateful for those that showed up Friday afternoon and evening to help at the campground, get things cleaned up. Another group had been there Wednesday and, and uh, got things all tidied and ready for camp, youth camp starting tomorrow. But... Uh, Somewhat near the end of our time there, my little granddaughter, J.C., she was getting sleepy. Well, I was too, but, uh, you know, it's a little different when Papa gets sleepy versus when a baby gets sleepy. And, and she came to me, and those of you that know J.C., she's very cuddly. I don't have any problem holding her. But uh, as I was holding her, you know, she weighs a little more than, uh, I would say, probably... Uh, well, she probably weighs around 20 pounds. Now, when she gets older, she's going to say, uh, Papa, what are you dis discussing my weight for? You get into danger when you discuss a woman's weight at any age. But uh, right now, she doesn't even know I'm talking about her. But, you know, my arms start getting tired. Can you imagine that? Well, I was carrying her around for a while and and uh, I was, uh, I guess during that time, since I was holding her, I was relieved from running a rake, you know, moving stone. There were some other guys who were helping level stone. And, and uh, so I got to just stand and watch for a little while. But you know what? My arms got so tired. And she's not heavy, but whew, after a while, I had to go sit down. Imagine that. And I wanted to take a nap, but it wasn't in such a way that I could. So I didn't get to work one of those in. But you know what? My arms got tired. Oh, just not really a heavy load, but uh, after a while they got tired. But you know what? We're talking about the eternal God whose arms never get tired. Isn't that amazing? And, he, and it says that they are underneath, underneath you. He is there to carry you. He is there to support you. As we look at this this morning, I see within this verse of Scripture, promise of protection by our wonderful, eternal God. Promise of protection. 
I believe that this protection is even in this life. He offers us refuge. He says the eternal God is your refuge. I believe that He offers us refuge from the storms of life. The fact is, and Brianna made reference to a storm in her life, and the fact is all of us at some time or another have storms, don't we? It becomes a part of life. As a matter of fact, Wednesday night we had a literal storm. Uh, some of you were here, some of you were not. And about 6.30, I got an alert on my phone that uh, sounded an alarm, one that is not very customary, one that I didn't, don't hear very often, thankfully. But uh, that alarm sounded, got my attention, I looked at it, and it said that a tornado warning had been issued and that it uh, would be coming through our area about 6.45. Well, the thing is, it's Wednesday night, and uh, it's 6.30, and I know that already some people are at church, and I am preparing to leave and head in this direction, and so I looked at the clouds, and I decided to head on to church and at least be here to uh, maybe give some support to others if we needed that. And uh, then another alarm came through at 6.45 and said, well, that's been extended to 7.15. And so we were watching and we understood that maybe something was at Albany, maybe moving this direction. And uh, we sent the ladies into a place of safety. We considered going to the basement at the old church. But by then I figured, well, if it's coming, we're worse shape going from here to there. We better hunker down here. And uh, so we sent the ladies to a place of safety here in the building. And then uh, some of the fellas, we just wanted to watch and see if it was coming. You know, we got out where it was real safe, where we could run. But uh, we watched, and uh, I could see the sun under the clouds, so I knew that uh, there wasn't at least a visible funnel at that point. And then we watched the clouds as they moved east. And then all of a sudden, whew, boy, the wind began to really uh, get powerful and those clouds that were north of us came right over top of us in a hurry. There were no funnels, but uh, they were moving pretty fast and for five minutes we got lots and lots of rain. And then we went on and had a great service. So if you weren't here, you missed out. But uh, you know what? It was a storm. It was a storm. And uh, storms come Storms of life come. And I want you to think about this morning that the eternal God, the one who actually created the storm, the one who spoke this world into existence, the one that was here before, before the world was, He is our refuge. He is the one that designed you. He is the one that designed me. He is the one that designed man in his original sinless state in absolute human perfection. Yes, that's how man was created. God didn't make any mistakes or he didn't have to try to develop his design. You know, when we as human individuals come up with a design, many times it's a it's a work in progress, isn't it? We start out with a design and, and as we work into it, we realize, you know what, I need, to, I need to correct this part of the design. I need to add this uh, quality. I can make it a little bit better if I do this. That's just the way we are as human individuals. God is not that way. He started out with perfection. The reason we are less than possessing absolute perfection today is because of sin that came into the Garden of Eden in the beginning of time. So you see, God, the one who created man in his original sinless condition in the state of absolute perfection, he is our refuge. Protection in this life. Some of you remember the war that went on over in Iraq for approximately eight years. And during that eight-year war, while we were facing them in a variety of ways, we learned of many underground places of refuge that they had. Many underground bunkers we heard about. We heard about, you remember the WMDs, Weapons of Mass Destruction, 
You remember that terminology? And, and we learned of all of these places of refuge, underground bunkers, where they had all of those things. But in reality, when it was all said and done, those places of refuge did them no good, really, did it? Finally, ultimately, Saddam Hussein was found in one of his places of refuge and he was brought out and was brought to justice. His refuge, as well hidden as it was and well stocked as it was, it was not sufficient. There is no man-made place of refuge while we can, in the temporal sense, do things of appropriate protection Yet there is no protection that can compare to the protection that is provided by the eternal God that is our refuge. Protection in this life. But I want you to recognize not only the eternal God who made the rocks and the mountains, not only is He a protection in this life, He provides protection in the life of the world to come. You know, in reality, that's much, much more important. Certainly, we appreciate His refuge. We appreciate His protection that He provides here in this life. And yet, what is much more comforting is to know that we can have protection in the life of the world to come. We know the Scriptures clearly teach that there is coming a day of worldwide Judgment. Did you know that? It's written in the book of Revelation. It tells us there that there was a great white throne judgment and it tells lots of details about that. And then in another place, the Apostle Paul writes and tells us that every one of us, you find that in Romans chapter 14 and verse 12, that every one of us, Jonathan Edwards, everyone else here today, every one of us will give account of ourselves to God. There is coming a judgment day in which the entire world, from the highest monarch to the lowest pulper, every one of us will stand on even ground before this eternal God. And it's wonderful to have Him as our refuge and a protection in the life of the world to come. You see, it is so important, as the Bible teaches, to send your sins on ahead of time rather than to let them follow you after. You see, it's much better to get forgiveness from God, who is the eternal God, the one who is going to be the ultimate judge in the end of time. Much better to get forgiveness from Him now rather than waiting till judgment and then all of a sudden everything gets brought out. Because the Scripture makes it clear that when we confess and when we repent now in this life, why He makes it as if we never ever did it. He covers all of that and He gives us a transformation. It's an amazing life walking with Him. But... He offers protection in the life of the world to come. Many years ago, in the early 1900s, in the country of South America, in a little town, a few of you, I know Sister Imogene would recognize this name of this town, and my mother would, the little town of Coroico. In that town, many years ago, probably nearly a hundred or a little more ago, a little boy by the name of Dionisio Palomino was born. And as he grew, he didn't know a lot about God, but he learned enough about God to know that someday there was coming a judgment. And as a young lad, he was fearful. And he, he lived there where they live is in the mountains. I have had the opportunity of being in that location. And uh, he asked his mother, he said, uh, is there any way we could just like make a hole in the side of this mountain and go in there and hide till the wrath of God is over. And his mother, she really didn't have a lot of knowledge and she said, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what we can do. It was just a few years after that when he became a young adult that incidentally my own grandparents were called to be missionaries there. And uh, my grandparents, Paul and Mary Inyart, were there ministering and in the course of of the several years that they spent there, they came in contact with Dionisio Palomino and he came to know 
the reality that you can have a personal relationship with that eternal God and you don't have to dig a hole in the side of the mountain to go hide. You can have a confidence where you can enter right into His presence and know that because He is your refuge, you don't have to be afraid even in the life hereafter. His life became totally transformed. My grandparents testified to the fact that when he got saved, his... his uh, Transformation was just so amazing, so bright. There was such an absolute change. And you know what? He became the first national pastor of one of their churches down there. He didn't have to be afraid anymore because he came to know the eternal God that is our refuge. He provides, God provides protection in this life, but in the life of the world to come. But secondly, this morning, I would like to point out that this eternal God not only offers a promise of protection, I believe He offers a promise of provision. A promise of provision. Remember what this verse says. Underneath are the everlasting arms. A promise of provision. I've told you before when my little girl... Jacinda was about uh, two to three years of age. She would often run up to me and put her arms in the air and say, Uppy, Daddy, Uppy, Daddy, Uppy. Still vividly remember that. But as I shared even regarding my little granddaughter, my father's arms would grow weary and tired. But a part of my responsibility as a father was to offer provision. For my daughter and then for my three boys that came along after that. And we do our best to make available those things that are necessary. I can remember my own father. A few of you would remember him. And uh, one of the things that I remember very vividly about him was his great big hands. He had great big hands. They were a lot bigger than mine. And uh, they weren't fat. They were just big. His fingers were about as big around, well, they were bigger around than my thumb. And uh, he, he knew music, and he could try to play the piano, but he'd hit two or three notes at the same time with his fingers, so he had a hard time playing the piano. And he would try to type, and he'd hit more than one key at the same time because his fingers were so big. But you know what? He, he knew how to handle an axe. He knew how to swing an axe and he knew how to handle a shovel and a rake and he knew how to farm and he knew how to make provision for his family. And while that is so very important, do you know that we have a God that offers provision for us? Well, my father as an earthly father did a great job in in offering provision. He knew how to throw hay bales. He knew how to handle a hundred pound burlap bag of feed to throw to the hogs. He knew how to do all of that, providing for his family. But do you know we have promise from the eternal God that underneath are his everlasting arms. Again, get that mental picture if you can of arms that can never grow tired. The strongest of men on this earth and women, their arms are going to grow tired but not so with our eternal God. Brother Steve Wright often quotes from Psalm 8 and makes reference to that verse that tells us, or asks the question actually, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? And if you would look at verse 3 of that psalm, you would find that the psalmist there, in talking about this God, he said, I consider your heavens, the work, get this, the work of your fingers. Now to us, the heavens, wow, we can't even reach them. We can't get anywhere close to them. But yet, the psalmist says, well, that's the work of his fingers. He said the moon, the stars. Why, can you imagine that? as large as those heavenly bodies are, that that's just part of the work of His fingers. 
and underneath us are his everlasting arms. Do you know that he took those great big hands? He flung this universe into existence. And then he took those great big hands and he intricately formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into him the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Shortly thereafter, he took a rib from his side, and he formed woman, and he put together the first married couple. God was the one who attended the first wedding. He gave the first bride away. God instituted marriage between a man and a woman, and that eternal God with those hands, He made man. And can you imagine if He could do that? Why, I, as I mentioned earlier, I thought my, my dad's hands were big. But my God's hands were so big, He used His hands to measure the Pacific Ocean. Can you imagine that? Well, I believe we'll put about this much water there. And He measured the Atlantic Ocean. I believe we'll put about this much water here. And he measured out all of the bodies of water. And then he scooped out some places. And then he piled up the Smoky Mountains. And he put together a little bit more rock and came up with the majestic Rockies. Why, you talk about big hands. And with those big hands, he offers provision for you and for me, the eternal God is our refuge and underneath are His everlasting arms. He offers provision. He offers the provision of support. He offers the provision of strength. He offers the provision of supply. The Bible says, My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. It doesn't say He will give you all your wants. That brand new Cadillac you're wanting, I'm sorry He didn't promise that, but that generic little Chevrolet He will make available. He will provide all of your needs. Yes, those great big arms are underneath me and they're underneath you what a promise what a promise of provision but I want to notice with you thoroughly this morning not only does his promise provide protection and provision I believe that there is within this terminology of this verse the promise of permanence the fact is that some of the greatest places of refuge made by man have a way of deteriorating, right? I mean, even homes. I've, I've seen some beautiful, beautiful, brand new homes. And some of those, if they are not maintained over a period of years, and I come back to visit many years later, I'm like, wow, I remember when this was... A lot nicer. Those things have to be maintained. I mean, the nicest of structures have to constantly be maintained. You have to do things. You have to add new paint. You have to replace carpet. You have to do a variety of things. Things have to be done to maintain. Well, you can buy brand new appliances. And uh, believe me, I know, as a matter of fact... They have to be replaced. Just this week, our refrigerator began to act a little strange and start making funny noises and began sending signals to my wife that she needed a new refrigerator. Can you imagine that? It was making beeping noises, Morse code saying, buy a new refrigerator. <laughs> and that beeping was driving me crazy. So I just caved in and said, sure, we need a new refrigerator, right? I'm exaggerating a little bit as she is uh, wanting you to know while I am preaching. But the fact is, the best of things, the nicest of things have a way of deteriorating, don't they? That's just the way they are. I can remember 
childhood memory, I, I imagine my sister Esther would remember when we were in the state of Pennsylvania in a camp meeting there, what we referred to as Edders. Uh, it was close to Newberrytown, Pennsylvania. Just down the road from that campground was a place back off the road. I don't even know how we found out about it. We found out from some of the other teenagers at the campground. We were, believe it or not, I was once a teenager. Can you believe that? Yeah, that's been a few years ago. I understand. I acknowledge. But uh, I was a teenager at the time, and we found out from some of the others about this place, and it was back off the road, and there were no signs that said no trespassing. So being curious and adventurous, uh, we went back in there, and there was evidence that this magnificent structure had once been a beautiful mansion. It was referred to as Kunkel's Mansion. Do you remember that, Esther? Kunkel's Mansion. And uh, now it was all grown up. Trees were grown up. I mean, saplings and, I mean, even growing out of the side of the porch and things like that. But that structure had evidence of magnificence at one time. It was made out of huge variety of size, huge big stones, variety of colors. Some of them were kind of pink in color. Some of them were just a regular gray stone look. But there was a variety of colors. It was all put together, masonry, beautifully built. And uh, we even, uh, you know, being adventurous, we, uh, we got inside. Didn't say no trespassing, so we got inside. And, uh, man, there was evidence of a beautiful, what was once an elegant entrance door there was a cellar below, there was an upstairs above and an attic. And of course we had to examine every square inch of that old mansion. And there was evidence that it had been magnificent at one time. But now bro windows were broken. Some of that elegant wood, there was, a, there was a beautiful, or what had been beautiful, evidence that it was beautiful fireplace in every room in that house. That's how they heated the place. There was a different fireplace in every room and they were beautiful carvings but yet there was deterioration. It had been let go. I don't know. I never did find the story behind that. I always wondered what happened. Somebody of great wealth built that at some time but somewhere along the line somebody passed away or somebody lost interest in didn't have money necessary to maintain it. It had evidence of having been magnificent. And then, after those many years, it was deteriorating into a condition that it had very little value. It would have taken a whole lot more to restore it than it was probably worth. A very sad picture of what once had been beautiful. But you know what? In regards to that which man makes, that is the result. But what God provides, God can make permanent for us. As we've already endeavored to point out at the beginning of the message today, He is our eternal God. Not just someone that is there in passing, but He is our eternal God. His refuge that He provides is permanent. We don't have to worry about His refuge deteriorating. We don't have to think, oh no, what happens 50 years from now? If I'm still living, what happens? I can assure you the eternal God will be right there. His refuge will be just as permanent as it is today, providing for us that which is necessary for that which we need. While the strongest arms in this life get weary, even holding a small child, yet underneath are His everlasting arms that never get tired, never get weary, and provide for us a permanent refuge. I don't know what you might be facing right now. I don't know what storm may be brewing in your life. I don't know what circumstances you may be worried about or anxious about. But I'm here to tell you that we have an eternal God. And underneath you are the everlasting arms. Praise God. Promise 
of protection, promise of provision, and a promise of permanence. Praise God. I encourage you to look to our eternal God and recognize that He is there to provide for you all of the support that you need. Praise God. Let's stand together this morning. Praise the Lord. Anytime you're faced with anxiousness or anxiety or concern about the future, just keep in mind we serve the God that is the eternal God and He promises to be your refuge. Praise God. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank You for the opportunity that we have to be in Your house today. Thank You for Your Word that brings comfort and strength. Thank You for the reality of knowing that You are, in fact, the eternal God that is there to carry us, to strengthen us, to support us, to provide for us. And You are a refuge that does not deteriorate but remains permanent throughout eternity. Lord, we thank You for the opportunity that we have to come together as we are today. And we just pray that You will help each one of us to recognize that You are there for us. In your precious name, the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You are dismissed.